Hello Steamian, thanks for coming back to the channel. Today I'm going to tell the story of my biggest mistake in business. Keep watching and I'll give you more information. Hi Steamians, this is a story I've not wanted to tell on YouTube. Uh, and it's something that obviously there's, I'm reluctant to tell because everybody has or wants to give a professional impression that they've always made the right decisions, business, they've never made any mistakes. And we all make mistakes, but this is not a mistake in terms of, oh, uh, I misjudged the popularity of Instagram. It's not that sort of mistake. It's a mistake that's cost me money. Uh, and I'll, I'll talk about the amount uh, later on. But here, here's the story. 2011, my business was just one year old. I had the idea to develop an app I'm a content creator, so I write, manage social media profiles and uh, create video content for businesses. Uh, that's what we do as a, as a company. Uh, we don't, we're not developers. We don't have any in-house developers. So I approached a, a number of companies, needed developers to develop this app. I gave them the concept. The concept was, was good. It was going to uh, promote the business uh, to a number of uh, small and medium sized businesses by giving them an app with lots of marketing expertise within this app. We could not deliver this in house. We needed to work with team of developers. We approached companies, a few companies, picked one, started working with them. They seemed very professional. They seemed very together. We had the meetings. We discussed the concept. Everything seemed to be going fine at the initial stages. When the work started, Obviously, they, they uh, put a, a lot of emphasis on the payment schedule and making sure that we hit the payment milestones, and we did. Uh, and so we would pay uh, an amount, and I will come to the amount uh, towards the end of the story. Uh, we paid an amount, and we expected them to keep continuing with the work. We have no way of checking or validating or, or the, uh, the effectiveness of their work as, as developers and how good this app would be. We had the concepts, we had lay downs, we had an idea of how it would look, we had discussed functionality, but that's all we can do uh, from our perspective, that's all I could do. Uh, and then we work, this was a sort of six month process. Once again, we'd have the development meetings, we'd have the updates and it's all seemed very good and seemed to be progressing. We get to the end of the process and now I've paid £10,000, which is, I suppose, the equivalent in today's terms of about $14,000. We have an app. We have an app. Um, what One of the things that we try to do for our clients is we try to deliver excellence. We will always go beyond what is expected and try to surpass uh, any expectations and, and, and obviously over deliver. This is our approach. We, we take providing professional services very seriously. And we expect everybody else to do that. That's our mistake. Everybody else is not like you. Uh, they, developed, they delivered an app. It was okay, basic. It wasn't so bad that we could take them to court and get our money back, but it wasn't uh, excellent. It was okay. It was average. So we launched it into the app store. Then we wanted to make some revisions and updates. Uh, and we did that, and when we passed, when that was passed through the app store's validation process, they said, mm, there were some things we don't like about the app. They accepted the first version of the app, but we weren't able to do updates. They said that some improvements needed to be made. When I put this to the company, the developers, they said, oh, if we're gonna make improvements, it's gonna cost you X, Y, and Z, obviously a lot more money. Uh, but these improvements were being required by Apple to meet standards. So this is version two. Uh, that we that we needed to do and the developers were oh well if we need to make improvements uh, it's going to cost you and that didn't sit well with me because we were making improvements because Apple was asking us to make these improvements to bring the, the app up to standard the first version of the app was released and, and you know there's a lot there's a proper launch for it and we did get users and we got feedback and it was, it was genuinely positive but we I feel we missed an opportunity and when I say we missed an opportunity uh, the opportunity wasn't taken by the developers because they were more interested in collecting the money than they were in delivering a great job that was my feeling that was my gut instinct but as I said they hadn't done such a bad job that I could take them to court and and, and recover all the funds I did give them feedback that you know, this wasn't the best ever, and this is obviously ten thousand pounds. Ten thousand pounds 
is still a significant amount to me uh, and uh, I'm sure it is, is to most of you out there. Uh, but they didn't really take responsibility for delivering a, a, an average so-so weak product. Uh, and this is something that I've learned that my lesson is that not everybody has the same professional approach that you have. So you feel that, you know, you, you, you will over deliver and, and you're, you know, uh, a perfectionist in, in, in many senses in how you deliver your work and what you do for clients and how you're available and, set and what you try and do if there's a, an issue or a concern but not everybody's like that I have kept track with the directors of the company and so an update is that that company was wound up there was a lot of uh, I saw online there was a lot of discussion about poor customer service about people being ripped off and as I said in my personal case I can't say that I was ripped off because I did receive an app. The company, we did have an app. We do have an app in the app store. Was it to the standard that we required? No. Uh, if we'd had enough developers, would we have done a, a created a better, a better app? Yes. Uh, but these are lessons that you learn in business. That money has gone and won't be recovered. The company was wound up. The director, he's still in business in another company and the director and the uh, project manager and uh, I think the head of production, the, those are the, the people that I, I had uh, most contact with. They are still in business, but they have moved on to different companies and they have removed right. all reference to this other company that they used to work at because it has such a bad reputation. So there are lots of people who went through a similar experience to me, obviously some of them far more aggrieved and with greater justification, and they complained against that company. So if you were to type in the company's name, and I'm not gonna do that now, I'm not gonna tell you what the name of the company is, because it's, as I say, it's no longer in existence. You would see lots of uh, poor reviews, poor customer service uh, reports, uh, uh, people, just disgruntled online. That's one of the beauties of, of the online environment. If you do a bad job, people will let you know and other people, and that's one of the reasons why I'm making this video, other people can then be warned about certain individuals and avoid them. And that's a, uh, the biggest mistake I've made uh, in business. And I, obviously I regret it and I still remember, but I want you to learn from that. Sometimes we make mistakes and I, I was wrong to place trust. We do business with those we, we know, like, and trust. And those are the words attributed to, to Mark Twain, I think. Uh, but, but I was wrong to trust that individual and that team because they weren't really concerned about delivery or execution and execution is vital. So that was my biggest mistake in business. I've never spoken about this on YouTube. Uh, I'm only going to upload this exclusively to DTube and I'd like to hear from you. Have you made mistakes in business? What did you learn from it? How much did it cost you? Uh, you know, I, I'd like to hear from you. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll be back uh, probably in a few days now, because if you think about the timing of this, uh, I'll be probably back, back in a few days with, uh, with another video. Take care. Uh, have a great Christmas and a happy new year. And I'll speak to you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.